Montpelier Planning Commission meeting for Tuesday, November 12th. This meeting was rescheduled from yesterday because of Veterans Day. Uh, so the first uh, thing we have to do is uh, approve the agenda. And we're going to take a look. No, I think no. it's just one you okay. can approve unless there's no okay. there's no changes can approve. Right, no changes. Do we, do we have a quorum of the historic preservation committee? We we don't. Okay. Um, we warned we'll it in get... case it happened. Okay. So Very thorough. Um, okay. Well, so we'll we'll deem that approved then and uh, move on to the comments from the chair. I I don't really have any other than uh, to say that last time just to touch just to touch officially back on on something that happened last time we we talked about. Uh, View sheds and and regulating view sheds, and we had decided to we we're going to probably leave that out of the discussion tonight. Uh, so instead, we'll be picking that up later. And Mike has some reports and and for us to look through, and, and we'll be looking at that um, thoroughly. But but that's its own issue in the future. Um, that's all I had to say. Does anybody else have anything to report? Okay, um, Marcella, did you mention that you are getting a subcommittee position on the regional planning commission? That's the plan, I think, is just to fill the one that you were on. Okay. So I was emailing with Laura today, and she said that they can put it forward. They can put my name forward for the subcommittee on the regional plan um, tonight, even if I'm not there. Yeah. And then, um, so I think that's fine. And last last month, she asked the room if anyone else wanted to do it, and nobody did. So <laughs> I'm expecting it will be me, but um, I'll let, I can let you know. What's the subcommittee? The regional plan. It's the Regional Plan Subcommittee the of the Regional <laughs> Planning Commission. Yeah, I have yes. this helpful document. It's the Committee on Committees. It's this one, okay. yeah. Um, a core competency. Regional, <laughs> regional Plan taking Kirby space. Yeah. Yes. But it's not a, it's not a bad one to be on as far as the no. subcommittees go. Yeah. It's, uh, and it'll be handy when Montpelier goes to uh, uh, yeah, review our part of it. So, okay, that's great. Uh, moving on, uh, we're going to continue. Um, oh, first we have to review the minutes. So, does everyone want to take a look at the minutes? And so I wasn't at the last meeting, so I assume I should vote, but then maybe we don't have four people. I think it's fine for you to vote. Okay. <laughs> Seems like the, the least amount of complication. <clears throat> Changes. Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Okay, moved by Aaron. Second. I can second. Marcella seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Approved. Okay, now moving on to business. Uh, I want to make sure that we get through um, our discussion and vote on the design review uh, district regs proposal and the map tonight. Um, we had uh, discussed the possibility of the Historic Preservation Committee also being having a joint meeting with us, but it appears that um, not everyone can make it, which is fine. We have Eric here uh, to participate, and uh, I always have Meredith to help out. So, uh, do you guys want to come up here and jump in that way? Fine here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have, we have, we have, you can have one up here. Thank you. 
All right, all right, super. So let's jump back in. I haven't given a lot of thought about how we want to go through. Do we? Is everyone interested in walking through like we did last time? Um, revisiting the things that can Meredith had brought so up. What, so can I ask a question? What does this draft reflect? It's the same one that you had last time. We yeah. didn't. You didn't change it. We didn't make the changes to it. Yeah. yeah, so if you have the one with your notes from the last meeting, then that's the same thing. Can you articulate the goal of like where we want to get to tonight? We want, we want to uh, pass these out. Um, and uh, my recollection, and I didn't, I didn't bring the ones that I'd written on last time, but I didn't really bring much notes, write, write much notes anyway. My recollection was that out of the suggestions that were on there, I don't recall any that we were planning to that we have definitely decided to keep. Meredith, you can remind me if I'm ideas. wrong about that. Yeah, there were some tweaks to what had been changed or deletions? Some deletions. Yeah, mostly were, deletions were right. and then maybe some other tweaks to language that was in there before. Okay. Um, and then I think the only thing that was really still open for discussion was, and, and I may be wrong on this, but was the whole energy conservation measures funkiness mm -hmm. um, that you hadn't quite decided how to deal with, I thought, just because I have a little note that says next week on it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's uh, since you've had some more time to think about it, you may have all decided to just... So I, can I, see, I see a couple options. We could, we could briefly run back through everything, or we can just say that we're going, we'll pass on the suggestions, because that's the way it was looking last time. We'll pass mm -hmm. on them by default and that we'll revisit this one and take a look at it. So how do people want to use their time? What do you mean you'll pass on what you say? The, the only other change that I is the guest mm -hmm. yes, historic building. Oh yeah, yeah, I had that as they... I know, they had that before. Yeah, no, I had that as a, they yeah. rejected it again on my notes. I had they rejected that addition again. Which one are we talking about? The change to the definition of historic building on page 14. In my notes, I had the, that you went back and, and got rid of the suggestion again. Right. So, yeah, so how about we, uh, let, let's not go back over what we already yeah. discussed last week. Because that took just, a whole and, meeting. Yeah, and let's just go into uh, uh, the building materials discussion. And yeah. then, and if there's anything else you've noted that we need to talk about, I, and anything Eric wants. Yeah, Eric, well. if you wanted to bring anything else up again. No, I, I, I okay. it's done. So then that's the last one that we didn't totally resolve. That's going to, you know, I don't know as, I don't know as we actually came to a final conclusion as to what this was trying to get at. Yeah. The page eight. Yeah, the page eight change about before implementing energy conservation measures, um, existing energy efficient characteristics of the building you know, need to be taken into consideration was one suggestion during the meeting or just delete it all out. I don't know if that was resolved. I think that the uh, issue there really is that some treatments that people think are energy conservation treatments can be uh, very damaging to a building. Probably, the, if you have a paint peeling problem and you put vinyl siding on it, the paint peeling is probably caused by moisture in the building. And if you put vinyl siding on it, you trap it. I mean, I actually looked at a house that had completely composted. It's an old pre-1800 house with uh, corner posts that we're in. I could take a stick a screwdriver this far into all the corner posts. His complaint was the siding was buckling. So I think that's the you know that that's the point behind looking at it changes that people have been sold on this energy conservation. Windows is probably the biggest issue. Uh, even the uh, uh, efficiency of Vermont, the, you know, the, and there are studies that show that you can rehab windows if they're in reasonable condition and get as and put storm windows on and get as much energy efficiency. So I think that's that's what that was trying to get at, uh, particularly things that were damaging to the building, potentially damaging. Okay. I mean, all buildings behave a little differently. So 
So I, I do have some language from Barb, by the way. She just sent this out in case she couldn't make it. Um, so I'll, I'll just throw that out there. And Eric, what do you, you can tell me what you think of this. I don't think this gets at what you were just saying, but you tell me. Um, so instead of what we have on strike through on page nine here, instead of what's there, we would have materials should not be added to the exterior walls of the building that could damage the condition of historic materials. But it's closer to what the problem, the whole after the comma in the sentence is just confuses me. Like the existing energy efficient characteristic doesn't mm -hmm. seem to get at what you're explaining and what Barry was explaining last mm -hmm. week. Um, so she's close there. Maybe we can just add structures instead of, you know, not limited to just put something on the outside of the building. Yeah, I think we had talked, or at least mm -hmm. I had notes of the changing the second energy efficiency so the end of the sentence after the comma would be the existing historic characteristics of the building shall be identified. Yeah, I have that too. Um, I, I would just suggest that um, I think it, at the top of, on page eight, sub four under materials, first sentence I think actually speaks to this issue pretty well, which is historic building materials should be preserved to the maximum extent practical and replaced in kind when they have deteriorated beyond repair. Placements of, of materials shall match existing materials with the maximum to the maximum extent feasible. I feel like this does a pretty good job of speaking to the vinyl siding issue. Um, I'm willing to listen to any concerns to the contrary, but I think that the existing language adequately addresses the concern Can that we already have. Sorry. Yeah, the, sure, go ahead. Can I just explain something about the setup here? Sure. So your first paragraph here that you just pointed out for materials is supposed to be sort of what the standard is. Mm -hmm. What's underneath it is different ways you can be examining that standard and whether or not your application meets that standard. So these are different subcategories of things that may come up is the way I looked at this for the organizational purposes. And you may not always have a design review committee that has thought about the, you know, I'm adding something, okay, great, it's for energy efficiency, that's fabulous, we're not going to worry about it, because you may not always have people on the committee or even at, or attending that particular hearing who would think to look at what the, you know, not necessarily foreseen impacts might be. I think that's why we have some of this, that, that in a subcategory here. That may have been too many words, sorry. <laughs> I sometimes talk more than I need to. I think it's to bring energy into the picture because there are people who think that the only important thing to deal with is the energy efficiency of a building. That's it. And so they come forward with uh, things that are very destructive of the historic character. What do you think about Mike's idea to just point out that, they, that those things should be identified? Historic. Right, that's what you were saying, right? Well, that's, yeah, I know I, I had at least recommended the changing energy efficient to historic characteristics of the building shall be identified. I, I have and preserved struck out. I don't remember why I would have done that. I don't know if somebody else had suggested that. Yeah, I, have the, I have the same yeah. word, too. And they also have a be taken into consideration as an option as well. Like, they need to be identified. The committee also has to. Oh, okay. It has to be more than just identified that in the application, but also maybe considered by the committee. I don't know. If we're worried about energy efficient additions harming the building, can we just say that? Don't add energy conservation measures that will harm the structure of the building. <laughs> I feel like that's way too broad. I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, How? Um, but I, 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 I'm yeah. sure it is, but can you help me understand <laughs> No, no, I, and, and I admit I probably have a <coughs> bias towards energy efficiency here, so, um, I, 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 yeah, I, I mean, I agree with what Aaron said a while ago. I'm not sure why it needs to be called out, because it does seem like the materials, um, the, you know, is, is saying, right, so... Maybe I missed the... It's, it's some of these scenarios that they brought up where someone's trying, they think they're well-meaning and they think they're improving something, but they're actually doing more harm than good. But 
there's a lot of ways to go about addressing that problem, right? That's right. what we're trying to get at. Yeah. What's the best Maybe way? Maybe number one covers it. Yeah, I mean, aren't you already taking into account the mm -hmm. the building materials are <coughs> appropriate? I mean, if, if it's like a bad energy, I mean, if it's designed poorly and it's going to result in moisture, <laughs> that's like a whole other issue, I think. It, or, yeah, maybe it, I'm just it, it is something design review takes into consideration, things that are destructive to the building. I mean, one of the things about mounting signs is an example. You're supposed to mount them in the mortar, not drill holes in the bricks. You, you know, and oh. I think this, this falls in that same kind of category of things uh, that relies on the you know, expertise on design review to catch because you know, sometimes the window and vinyl siding salesmen get there first. <laughs> and uh, vinyl siding solves all your problems, right? So, uh, I think it's just the, the idea of having it mentioned in there so we're considering it is, is important that we have the authority to deal with it. Uh, speaking as a member of the design review committee. So there's an instance in which the historic materials they're using would be uh, compatible, but you would feel that it's designed in a, in a uh, poor way? I'm trying to think of an example of that. Uh, very unlikely, actually, that if you're using a historic map, replacing it in kind, you know, you're uh, and, uh, if insulation is done well, that's fine. Uh, but it, it has to be done ventilated the right way and using the right vapor barriers or insulation. Is that, that's something we wouldn't review anyway. But we do look for the designer who does look for things that are potentially destructive to the building. Uh, Maybe it's captured in this beginning generally applicable but I mean there's a lot of about um, one just up to B7 sub B little I um, it's like page 7 page 7 yeah the bottom half of page 7 so like you can't um, additions uh, shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original if you're going to be making the walls rot, you can't do that through there. Deteriorated features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Development shall not destroy historic materials that characterize a historic building. Let's kind of get that. This I, I mean, my only example that I really understand is putting insulation over brick. That's But if we're protecting the material, the historic material of the brick, then we can't. Well, it's, it's interesting isn't it, that it, that uh, Efficiency Vermont said the first thing to do uh, is to control air infiltration and along with that you should do some moisture control uh, because there's a lot of houses around with dirt floors uh, and thing you know just there's water getting in the building one way or another coming in the basement and, and or leaking in and just controlling that moisture like even bathroom vents and kitchen vents so there's ways to kind of counter like that by dealing, but that's that's not, has nothing to do with the regular part. I guess is there a specific reason to call out energy conservation measures? Maybe that's what we started. <laughs> if it's just if it's too confusing, then maybe it's captured. Can, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. It might be something where 
this is something that is used as an example in the guidelines versus being here in the regulations because it does seem to be kind of covered based on what everybody's saying. And I don't know if that's something that you would feel comfortable with, Eric. Uh, I, I think I think that's a good idea and much more of the details, you know, and they put I think giving, you know, the authority to deal with energy conference you know, to have that discussion. Otherwise somebody that got really technical is like, you know, energy is what we're doing and I don't know. Well, I, I guess I'd like to leave some room for people to be able to like explain if they're doing some new technology. I mean, I, I can't think of an example, but <coughs> if they're using heat pumps, like to explain how that might work. Are you saying that, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling a little uncomfortable with, I'm, I'm not sure what we're talking about maybe. And the concern is energy conservation that damage the building. Well, for but sure. what's I mean, if it's not affecting historic materials, I don't. Right. It sounds like you want to review energy efficiency upgrades no. if they're not affecting Only in historic a very limited materials. Way I would, I, I would want. I can't remember how that got in there. I don't remember who first put it in, yeah. but I mean, it's it's. The other thing to remember is the only thing that's going to get into design review is stuff that is going on the outside of a building that's in design review. Whether it's energy conservation or not, that's going to, everything, well, not everything anymore because there's a bunch of exemptions, but you're going to have to first get into the bucket to even get here. Okay, you know, yeah, sorry. Or, or My earlier, example earlier was a on, poor one. There's, there's a whole bunch of things that are going to be exempted out, including yeah. a bunch of utilities on the, you know, on the yeah. outside of the building as long as they're on, I can't remember if it's the rear or the side yeah, elevation, yeah. it depends. Those are all, those aren't even going to get before the design review committee or they're just going to be administratively approved. Yeah, I guess, oh. Some, some of these things will be approved administratively as long as we can go, oh, is it screened or is it the same color as the side of the building? Oh, okay. Then we'll but be like, You're oh, right, okay. there may be a, a number of things that, I mean, really, the, the, these have to be things that affect the outside of the building. So somebody just insulating the building is probably not even going to go through design review. Right, and this one is specifically, this has been moved so it's specifically only historic buildings. It only applies to buildings that are both historic and in, within the design review district. And you're talking about, you know, replacement of historic building materials on that historic building. So you've really narrowed down when this is going to come into play anyway. So I guess the question is, is what's the, why is it critical that the homeowner identify existing characteristics for the design review board in instances where they're seeking to implement energy conservation measures, why that should apply in that specific instance and not any other one? If we, because I agree with you. I think what we're all talking, we're all talking about the same thing, which is a very li limited purview of the design review board, which is changes to the exterior of the building, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and it just, it, it, again, I think it just seems to me that I think that the draft that we have already does a good job of allowing the design review board to take a look at specifically these things. Mm -hmm. Citing, you know, citing that goes out, somebody wants to put in new windows because they think that that's going to create energy efficiency, you know, when I think I think it's a little not germane to this, but we can have a debate about whether or not that's a good use of your money for energy efficiency, something like that. But like, again, I think sub four here does mm -hmm. it. I think it gives really broad latitude to the board. And I, you know, if somebody were to come to the design review board without number four in here and, and said, I want to do these things, you know, for energy efficiency reasons, I think this language gives you, gives mm -hmm. the design review board ample authority to say, not, you know, you want to do what? <laughs> you, you want to put a vinyl siding? Like, well, that doesn't, you know, that's not in kind, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, to me, this just sort of creates an additional step that I don't know, I don't quite see what the value of it is for anybody involved in the process. Um, so what's crucial there going to Eric's concern is that the way we're reading this is that, that it's absolutely on the table to look at energy efficiency without this language and an argument from a, from a homeowner saying, well, this is for energy efficiency. 
like that's not going to override your ability to look at it anyway. I think that's yes. And I mean, that, exactly. we're saying that it's, it's it's that's that's the state of things without any additional I language. Think, yeah, I, I, I think the only things energy kind of things I can remember reviewing are the windows, of course, yeah. but where the heat pumps are located yeah. and the piping, uh, it, because some people want to put piping up the front wall of the building for their for their heat pumps and you know that and that's that's excluded and, and I think this proposed scheme allows you to look at all of those things without putting in this last one this I, I have I have no problem taking it out really I, I, the, the only uh, the only thing is that, that, that is sort of the philosophical piece that Design review actually recognizes energy efficiency as a you know a goal that people have, and, okay. and, that, and so that we so you can't talk about this because it's a, it's an energy. That's what we don't want to have happen. Mm -hmm. I can do anything because it's energy efficiency. And I don't I don't think we have that problem with, with the way this is drafted. I think just the obvious retort to that, and I understand the concern. I just think the obvious retort is, is like, if you weren't, if you didn't live in an historic building in the design review district, you might have an argument. Mm -hmm. But you live in an historic mm -hmm. building in the design <laughs> review district, <laughs> so therefore, you know, it triggers. And it's not, you know, whatever your project is isn't under the list of exemptions. You can, you know. Well, we worked out the like piping on the outside of the. The new condos down on Berry Street, uh, and it actually made the building owners a lot happier because you know the engineers come in and say, "Well, the shortest way between two points is a straight line." So <laughs> uh, they put it on a very visible place on the building, and the, the right. And there was there wasn't a problem with that. I mean, there was no pushback designer. No, I think, and there's a lot of things that uh, that we do actually that uh, people are really happy. We've got some people on there that Steve Ebert has owns a bunch of buildings in town, so he's really experienced with construction techniques, and right. so some people go away happy. It just seems to me that, that there's still going to be the you know the design review board is still going to yeah. have the ability to those 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 opportunities are still going to be there for the design review board to look at these things help developers and homeowners figure out ways to incorporate, you know, historical. You know, I, I, I agree. Things. Let's yeah, take so it out. Striking, striking number four then. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Did you have anything else? Did you? No. That was the, that was the last that was thing I had. Outstanding one yeah, I had. Okay. I have some, who is I have some questions the about the map. Meredith and I will put okay. together. And do you feel comfortable? Yeah. Knowing what we've, what we, yeah, okay. Uh, do we want to do we want to vote on those, and then move on to the map, or is it all one package, Mike? Uh, we've made decisions on individual items. I don't know if we, unless there's something specific what you I mean want is, me to do with it. Should we vote on the regs and the map as, together or separately? I guess it would depend what your motion is going to be. To be, if the motion is to start proceedings to adopt these, then I would probably wait till you have the map. Okay. okay. So we'll, that we'll was do it all our feeling from when we were drafting this stuff is that the map should really be done in conjunction with the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. and it should be the last thing done. Right. Uh, and, that's, and that is the way that we did it. We went over the regs first, and then went, and then the map after we had a really good feel for the regs. I'd go up there. I'd, I'd, I have a, several questions about the map. Yeah, go ahead. Ask us. Go up there and There's also, Mike's got one right there, too. Usually it gets harder here just because everybody's around it and we've got to watch for the microphones and everything else, but there is an identical map here. We just made it. Go up. Okay. Right. You might just have to I'll, make, I'll make notes on this one. Because <laughs> we don't have a mic up there that's on. This is a group effort, so we can just answer as a group. It took me a while to figure out why you made the changes you did. I think I finally got to most of it uh, 
<laughs> a lot of it has to do with schools and colleges. Uh, but uh, A lot of it has to do with existing boundaries for yeah. our zoning. Yeah. This, this, uh, this section, since it's not going to be owned by the college, I think it ought to be put back in. It's also a gateway significant near Saban's pasture. I don't think it should be excluded. I, I know they're planning on putting in some kind of a spa. But I think that should be in design review. The other thing I wondered, this set, if I'm right, that's the Main Street School. But it, you also went across the street, and I was curious about why that. I can answer that one. Uh, that's because it's a, it's, it's a different neighborhood within our zoning. And we understood that, yeah, that's a gateway coming down yeah. Main. But though, but, but there were just two or three parcels that were in a, in a different zoning neighborhood that were called out and separated. So we took those out so that yeah. that area matches what our zoning says. And we just kept the area in that's the neighborhood around Main Street Middle. Yeah. yeah. These, this is owned by the college, I think. I don't know about this piece. I just didn't think that. I also didn't these additions here, they didn't drive up in that neighborhood. Those were all zoning too, right? Yeah, it just yep. is the pink zoning there, the western gateway. So yeah, the, the, the green and the red on the on the lower left side there, uh, that's just to make it match the zoning. Okay. What are because those are and because our our thought process, part of our thought process is that Mike went out and looked at the neighborhoods to make sure that the zoning matches what the neighborhood looks like. Okay. So those changes are based off of Mike's previous research to make the okay. design review match what the neighborhoods well, are this like. This is really good to continue this down mm -hmm. Barry Street so you can catch it both sides of the street. Yeah. Uh, but, but that little bit near the college, I think that's also based on zoning. I think the, we, okay. the part we have taking out there is because it's in a different neighborhood. And the addition on Barry Street is also based on zoning. Okay. Okay. Yep. And it matches the historical district. Is it is the historical district that it matches? I can't remember. The des designated it's downtown. That's designated, designated downtown. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was why we had to put it in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else, Eric? That's about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so. Are you? Are you? What? Do you, what are your thoughts? Just to just to learn more from you about those parcels that are next to the middle. Those yeah, those parcels next to the middle school. There's a really nice house right across the street from the middle school. That, uh, that whole block is. I don't think we're taking anything across the middle school out. Yeah. Well, the, this looks like you're. Picking on. Hold on. School. Let me no, zoom they're, in. They're that's further up Main Street from the middle that's school. J yeah, that's J Street. Hold on, just a sec. Yeah, okay. that's past North Street, so it's it's yeah, um it's on the hill. And you come down, you come down North Street, and you go right into J if you keep going straight. Yeah, but it's to the right if you're coming down North Street. Sorry, zooming in. Sorry, not right, left. Ha <laughs> ha. Direction. That's North Street, right? Yeah. So, where's my pointer? North Where the word Scribner North is? North is uh, Scribner is the there's school. There's J. Okay. So that's the, the map is a little fuzzy. <laughs> so right here yeah. where my little thing is, that's yeah. J Street. And this is just a zoning line. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's a neighborhood. That's a neighborhood district line. Okay. So as far as our zoning is concerned, those are different neighborhoods. So we're, we kept them separate for okay. design review, too. Yeah. Well, we'll work at making it bigger. <laughs> 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 now you can have whole new neighborhoods, then, if you want to work on expanding it. <laughs> It'll be 20 years. I can zoom in on anything else if people want to discuss anything else. I don't want to, I don't want to relitigate anything. Um, but one thing that's still on my mind is yeah, the area along Berlin Street there that we currently have out. Um, you see the angle at the river there? Yeah. Still curious why, because there's a lot of just very commercial development there, why that's not included. 
to match the zoning district. I mean, is that is that the zoning district? So this is this I'm is all about, residential yeah. in here, but here's the main bridge, and here's the start of Berlin Street. We do have. Yeah, that kind of a district. That neighborhood part, riverfront what, district that that's what I'm talking is about. partially in and partially not. So that was one place I was going to have a question was whether we wanted to include this entire neighborhood, which tends to gas station alley in design review. The rest of gas gas station alley is in and and then we've got a couple yeah. of parts up here too. The three we wanted to include. It might just follow the designated downtown line now. Yeah, but if you're following neighborhood dis lines everywhere else, just oh, for a, a... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm know. just saying that's why yeah. I think it's there now. She was yeah. just giving ah, the reason, not like gotcha. her policy opinion. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, Sorry, yeah, I didn't mean to scroll. This part not designated downtown, but it's in, in our design review. Wait, sorry, which is this map? This is, oh, sorry, design review. <coughs> So some Current of the design issues design review has had with the commercial because it's in now is the issue of corporate logos mm -hmm. and corporations requiring humongous signs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I, I have my own kind of cynical philosophy. If you're going to build a Kentucky Fried Chicken, let the bucket revolve because then it's a good example of that kind of architecture where a stall bucket is not. But. <laughs> uh, well, that stretch of a road that where the line goes down the river, that residential stretch there is uh, that, that's a, a pretty you know important role of houses. And it, it does uh, uh, they are slowly converting, converting to commercial. Well, they're in a residential. They're in a residential zoning district, so they can't convert. These guys can't convert any further. Okay. It had to be a permitted use. Yeah. I take it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's not in the historic district either on that side. My my memory is a little fuzzy on this one, um, but I remember we had a similar discussion about extending the boundary uh, to the other side of, I guess it would be the north side of Berry Street along that edge, and we decided not to do it. So, I mean, we've already sort of considered, you know, bringing in some more uh, of that Berry Street zoning. So we, Berry we, Street's we, more mixed use, so yeah, that's I, why it's, and I was going to ask you guys about that, because there's, the black line is Berry Street, Right. so if you're on the south side of Berry Street, you're in the design review, but you're mm -hmm. in the north side, you're not. Yeah. And we, I might suggest the neighborhood boundary actually starts here and just kind of notches out, catches one property on Sibley before coming back and then going up. Yeah. If we wanted oh, that's to. that's right, McEwen here for this. I, I think, I think our, our logic was that it's visible from across the river. The, you know, the river side of Berry Street is visible from across the river, whereas the other side's not, and I think that's what our logic was. We did talk about, though, about making yeah. it just as a, as a whole neighborhood conform. That, that, that issue has come up in discussions about the boundary before, and I didn't, I didn't catch it, but I, I really think that, you know, following the back lot lines and including that part of Berry Street, uh, so you're catching both sides of the street, it really doesn't make any sense to do have one side of the street in design review, to me anyway, one, one side of the street in design review and the other side not. Yeah, well, since design review is all about what you can see from the public right of way a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, that's part of what our, part of, part of the way we approached it was looking at gateways, looking at people coming into town and what they see and kind of wanting to, to focus on that. And that's so that Berry Street's an example of where the riverside is something that's has it's seen from a lot of vantage points, whereas the inner part there is not seen as much. There's some really, uh, you know, it's a nice historic neighborhood on the other side of Berry Street as well. There, mm -hmm. sure. There's maybe one or two houses on Berry Street that are not historic. Um, and I know for me, I was trying to figure out how to come up with as much. One thing we wanted was something that we could justify. If somebody asked us why am I in and mm -hmm. why are they not 
That's a reason. I mean, that's a reason people might disagree with it. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a reason, that's good. I mean, otherwise, I would say, you know, this is the only part of the neighborhood. The whole rest of this is all part of that same neighborhood. And that's the only part that's excluded. I would have included it just because it would have been more consistent to say everybody that's in that Mary Street neighborhood is in. Um, Downing Street is out of design review. I would probably push that up because that's part of UC2. And there's the back part of, that's the senior center. And the back part of the senior center is this little blue area you see. Mm -hmm. um, I would include those, so I'd push this guy back. Is that pushing Downing here. Street? Let me zoom in on that. Is that Monsignor Crosby? Monsignor way? Crosby, yeah, there's a couple of pieces that. Sorry, I can't zoom and also keep it centered. Oh, Bar Barry Street is a real, is a thoroughfare and it's is right. an entry into the community. Uh, and we'll, I think it'll only become more so. When they, when they get the intersection of uh, Barry and Main Street fixed, then it'll be a busier thoroughfare. Yeah, I think the colors look a little different because some of that's designated downtown and some of it isn't. Mm -hmm. So you have that green mm -hmm. hatching over some of it. Yeah, I mean, so my thought when it came to these, considering this is also a similar, I, I, my thought would have been to, to put that in, those in, and then to include the rest of this neighborhood here. I guess these are already in. It's already in. Yeah, yeah, those are already so in. It's just adding in these guys. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that would be uh, would make a really, a really good uh, adjustment because Berry Street really is an historic neighborhood. It has its own kind of special history of, of the big multi-unit buildings and boarding houses and stuff. We missed a little bit of the boat on this section here in that we already had Cumberland Farms fixed up. We already had the Dunkin' Donuts come in. We already had everybody come well, in and redevelop without design review. But a lot of this the is about time. the future. Yeah, a lot of this <laughs> is about the future. And it's also why, because Eric mentioned the college before, but we were talking about what if the college sells a bunch of stuff? What if National Life sells stuff? We were yeah. looking at it from that perspective when, yeah. we, were, when we were looking at this. So, so yes, what if you know, other gas stations come in? Yeah. And I've been, just been trying to look at what the underlying zoning is. So not only what the neighborhoods are, but we talked about if we're going to require them in areas that are predominantly single family homes, these are ones that don't, aren't eligible for tax credits and other, other things. So couple of places kind of make sense where it stops. These are more single family homes. They are historic, but do we require design review on single family homes that aren't eligible for the tax credits that commercial property would be eligible? So there are a couple of places that I thought made sense where we drew the line. And I like that one. Um, I don't know if we want to make any decisions on these. I, cause I had also had some questions on over by Redstone. Do you want me to zoom over there? I didn't know if we wanted to make any decisions yeah, yeah. or if we wanted well, to I guess hear what my thoughts were. Right. One, one comment, the Historic Preservation Commission and its long-term plan, which Mike has been a big help with, we talked about working on some incentives for people to do work on historic buildings, either a tax abatement, like the hotel got, and things like that. Uh, you mean you mean single family to single families? If 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 yeah. you do meet the preservation standards on your house, you can do a tax abatement yeah. with it, and that uh, I mean that has some complications to it, but uh, that gives the private property owner at least some incentive to 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 do something, and uh, because the, the only buildings that are eligible for the tax credits are. Uh, uh, Income producing building, so you can't do your own house. Yeah, tax credits. But the city can have some incentives. There's another one that came up the other day, and I forget what it was that we talked about. Uh, let's see, I wrote an email. <laughs> oh well. Well, before we, before we move on to, to the other things Mike wanted to point out, between the three different areas that Mike pointed out, does anyone have interest in? Adding those, we're discussing it further. I mean, we discussed 
the other side very straight. I'm game for that, but I recall the discussion. Mm -hmm. We decided. I mean, me and Mike was put a compelling case forward about Mike and Eric together. I think um, about it's a gateway in its own right, and a lot of historic buildings are concentrated there. And that the, the college owned property in Savens Pasture. That's going to be a pretty visible piece. I don't, I don't know what they're. I don't know what the design they're planning or layout they're planning. They talked about forty houses. I agree with you, Eric. <laughs> I've always thought we should have kept that in. Uh, oh, you did. It's not. It's yeah. not uh, out right now. It's, <laughs> it's just way out there for no reason. That's what it's 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 out there where there's it's other neighborhoods that seem even more appropriate because they're closer to downtown, they're more historic. All these other there's there's other things that are left out and, and we thought that so we were skeptical of why that's included. And Just the truth is it's undeveloped, which for us and our thought process and the way we approached this was undeveloped is in a I don't know. It's it's I guess they're planning on developing it. It's very visible particularly with the pasture there. As if, if you think of that part of Berry Street as a, as a uh, gateway, uh, and it's, that's what you're going to see visible when you from turn Is it visible from across the river? Yeah, because yeah, it yeah. goes up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all of Saban's pasture is visible from yeah. across the river. I mean, we all, just because there's development on the table, though, we can't make our decision right. based on that. No, yeah. no, and I think we're, we're trying to avoid, yeah. avoid that. Yeah. And I mean, avoid avoid regulating something just because we know it's likely to happen or something. Oh, yeah. Like, got it. Can I put my <laughs> administrator slash previous lawyer hat on for a second? So, you've been trying where you can to stick to neighborhood boundaries, right? So, in that case, I kind of see taking out. I mean, I, it looks like in general you're taking out things that are outside of the same neighborhood that the college is in, but you're also taking out things that are no longer owned by the college, right? But they're technically still in the same neighborhood. Those are all zoning so, neighborhood changes, though. I think all, all three of those around the Were college those all are, zoning neighborhood changes, Mike? Or were they just... Three zones in that parcel. No it's longer owned still, by... The, the other three. Right but, uh, still part. right, but are the other three... Those were no longer in this... The other red yeah. off of... The other two, the, the, the other corners, that, oh, or were they just no longer yeah. owned by the college? Those no, it two? wasn't because of ownership. No, there are other zoning. There are other zonings. There's, there's yeah, a little pink. We made no out decisions out based on okay. ownership yeah. for the okay. record. So then, <laughs> then I would almost say you got to leave the top, as I like to call it, the penguin. The top of the penguin is still that same zoning neighborhood, <laughs> right? Sure, sure. It's just no longer. It, it technically it's still owned by the college too, but that's still the same this neighborhood. This here is not owned by the college. Right, but it's still the same neighborhood. It's still the same neighborhood. So yeah. really, you if you're following the same reasoning you're using for everything else, you should keep that top part in. I don't think we've been like perfect about keeping all. I mean, have we? Although I guess it's technically a whole separate lot, parcel. That's its own parcel. That's right. It's its own parcel. Be impossible to be perfect yeah. and consistent in Montpelier. Yeah, at the same time. I think I think <laughs> one way to put it is we were trying to go by neighborhoods unless there's a compelling reason not to. And because it's a separate parcel. Yeah, I just I, yeah. I think you could include that. I mean, it is, but it's just the top part. The part that's actually being developed are the lower parts, but. That is part of that neighborhood. But then you do have the whole, it's one parcel with part of it in the district, part of it out. So which which rule do, is a stronger? Depends where, didn't depends we, where the proposal is. Placed. Didn't we discuss that part of the, um, I could be totally wrong, but part of the reason that's part of that neighborhood is, I mean, that, that whole zoning, zoning that parcel was a compromise. The, of some sort? The city council did it. Right. city council already did it. This line's actually old. The line is actually right here right now. I'm pretty sure the bottom part, the bottom leg has already been removed. Uh, no, it's still three separate zoning. 
three separate zoning districts, the design review line. But I guess oh, 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 the I'm design review the line. I, I thought we excluded. talked about the creation of the zoning districts in the first place wasn't exactly like oh, yes. making this, a lot this, of yeah. scientific. This is a single parcel with three zoning districts. Yeah. That was not your idea. That was city <laughs> council. So to me, that's a rationale for. That's that's part of why we disregarded okay. the neighborhoods there because we know that it was basically a political reason as why gotcha. they exist Thank the way they are. The Sorry to have thrown a wrench well, in the world. Thanks, no, thanks for remembering. That that <laughs> yes, that's all. Well, one of the matter. issues that I have with, uh, and it's a state law actually, is that excluding colleges, schools, municipal buildings, and everything from design review because what they've done is produced a really good list of what are likely to be the most significant buildings in town. Uh, you know, the churches, the public buildings, and all of that. Now that. They're excluded from most of what design review does. There's some aspects of it you can do, and I, I think that makes no sense at all. Uh, I think we considered that because there was discussion of dropping the entire college parcel, but we thought if the college is to sell it in the future, we'd want those buildings to be in design review because they are significant. I think the state law needs changing, but I don't have the oomph <laughs> up at the state house to do that. Thank you. What's the little blue again, Mike? You were um, pointing. So these were just a couple pieces that are on the back. They're actually the parts of they're the back half of these parcels. So the uh, parcel line for uh, the to the art, bakery, the art place, the school. Um, is actually the property line goes out past the design review line. The property that the um, senior center is on actually extends all the way back here. So I would just move it back to capture the rest of those parcels instead of having it go through the middle of the building. Okay. Mm -hmm. Downing Street, um, which is up next to the to the church, there's a little Downing Street that goes up. It's a dead end road, but it's it's still it's strange to think that all these other parcels around it. It's in the same neighborhood, in the same zoning district as Berry Street. So I would just capture the last five parcels that well, got missed. Oh, we just, I don't, maybe we didn't notice that that's a different Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, that's easy to, to miss that in this little blue. So that would get the entire UC2 neighborhood is in, the entire UC1 neighborhood is in. Um, One of the things Lisa Papazian tried to do when she redid the National Register District is that uh, the boundary used to run through lots, and she took the boundary to the lot lines, which makes a lot more sense, I think. So how about this? Let's uh, get this moving, and uh, I'll bring up each one, and we can do a show of hands of whether you would like to make that change. Uh, first one, uh, would, we, would we like to include any part of Sabin's? Okay, so that one didn't make it. Uh, do we want to add the other side of Berry Street? I'll, I'll be on board with that. Uh, so, so that's a yes, that was a three to one, it looks like. Uh, next question, do we want to add gas, the rest of Gas Station Alley for that entire zoning district? Not all the way down Prospect Street and all that, but just that zoning district. Dunkin' Donuts going nowhere, but yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Yay. That was, actually, that was the one I really wanted. Um, <laughs> do we want to uh, do the changes to Downing Street and the section behind uh, yeah, that makes sense. Senior that makes Center? Sense. Yeah, yes. Okay. That's a yes also. Because that bisects the building, you're saying? I think it goes just off the back of the building, but the rest of the parking lot and stuff, it just okay. seems to make sense. I would, as often as possible, follow parcel lines. Yeah, yeah exactly. all right. Did you say on Berry Street there was like a little jog at the end yeah. of it that's yeah, in yeah. the same zoning district? Just, like yeah, it, it's, it, there's a little white line which you can see that kind of goes up like this. It captures these first ones at the intersection of Granite Street. So following, if we followed the neighborhood boundary, it would capture those two. Yeah. And come up there. And then go Is up that what we want to do? Nelson um, Street. Yeah. Ah, yes, I'm sense. hearing that yes. Makes, that Is that what you want to do? Makes sense. Okay, so that's what that's what we voted for then to include the entire okay. neighborhood, the entire zone neighborhood. Uh, okay. And what's the I'm sorry. Like, what's everybody? the white line again? What, what boundary? So they're neighborhoods. So sometimes you have a long continuous zoning district, 
Please. So we'll look at the riverfront zoning district. Starts up here, goes all the way down, no, but you goes separate, down across you here, the and then goes out to the roundabout. Yeah. And it's divided into various neighborhoods, okay. but it's the same zoning so, district. So the way I'm just the neighborhood boundary. Yeah, okay. and this happens to be the neighborhood yep. boundary for that section. All right, great. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want me to go up to Redstone now? Yeah, if you want to go up to Redstone. Let's say Redstone. Okay. He had, he had something else to tell us about. Sorry, I keep losing my cursor. Oh, you can grab the little hand and oh, just drag thank it. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Yeah, that'll be easier. Way easier. Where am I going? All right, right there, there we are. Yeah. Right there. All right. So the, the couple of pieces that I had here for questions, one of which was we've got this design review that's splitting this neighborhood. That's a, that's a residential neighborhood. So I don't know if these should come down. This is the Redstone Building. You guys all know the Redstone Building? Yeah. Big mm -hmm. historic. It's out. I would finish the rest of this neighborhood and pull this up here and kind of capture that. I don't know if I would continue this this neighborhood. Actually, I think the neighborhood line may come down here, but I think this might be a second neighborhood. But I would just follow this at least through here. I don't think we need to grab the rest of State Street, but certainly if you were looking at Gateway, this neighborhood goes out to the cemetery and you could capture that, but these are more single family homes out this way. But the thought is this is mixed use zoning district. So this can have a mix of uses um, while these are single family and duplex. So it's much smaller. But Do you feel that way about the section that kind of goes up the hill behind the state house, the pink part? This is owned by the state. And then just the little bit that's right next to it in the lighter color, there's like four parcels. Yeah. Just, oh, these? Yeah. Yeah, I would have pulled these in to follow. That's UC1. That's a residential six, maybe? I, I'm, this, this, this is a semi-personal question, but I live on Richardson Street. Yes. And I wonder why, and my house is apparently excluded from design review. And I, I wonder why that is, because it's on the National Register and why it drops. I think that's the downtown, the designated downtown border up there. Yeah, this, well, this is the designated downtown border coming across here. And then yeah, it's the comes down. But it goes up and kind of wanders Blackline through that historic. neighborhood. The, blast, the Black Line is the historic district then? Yeah. Black Line is the design review district. Design review. The big black one. So I'm the question is, what the historic what, uh, district line is even different than that? It is. Yeah. I thought. Oh, I thought I thought, I thought there was at least something that that that, that line follows. Right. Other than I the will, current I design. I will view. attempt to trace out. So it comes down Terra Street and comes up here, over up over up, down over up, and then over. So actually, quite a lot of this neighborhood is in the historic district uh, that is currently not in design district. So there is an argument that could be made if 80% of this is already in the historic district, why don't we capture the rest of this neighborhood? Because uh, they're, they're all, uh, I mean, uh, they're virtually all historic buildings in that neighborhood or ones that are very compatible. I know there's an issue out on Terra Street about where you stop the historic district. Uh, when we had that discussion. I really thought it was the designated downtown. No, designated downtown is down here. The it historic really, district, really the old is. historic district used to go out to here. The new historic district, for whatever reason, took a couple properties out of Terra Street. Um, is that the old design review boundary? Is that why we left No, the old historic uh, is where this neighborhood went out. This, this design review district boundary has been random since it was created. And there was a, it ran right through a house, actually. Uh, one house. That's always fun. <laughs> so there's a certain justification. If we followed the outside of the pink and the outside of the green, it would actually be matching 
the historic registered district for this corner. As well as following neighborhood lights. As well as following neighborhoods. Yes. Yeah. As a, I can step to the microphone and I speak as a... Oh. <laughs> as, as a... Uh, Resident? Resident of the neighborhood. Okay. And, you can wear more than one hat at the table. And uh, uh, I think the neighbors would be very happy to be in design review. They don't have any problems with it. So my thought is once we decide what we're going to do, city council is going to expect us to do this, so I'm going to say we're going to do it anyways before they ask us to do it. Everybody who's getting changed is going to be getting a letter. Hi. You're currently in design review and you're going to be removed. If you've got an issue with this, come to the public hearing. Yeah. Or, hi, you're currently not in and we're going to be putting you into the design review district. Please come mm -hmm. down and then we'll get near full. But at least they're going to expect us. We should do it anyways because it's going to have a material effect. But there's a reason why we've decided to put this neighborhood in, assuming we do. The, the, the other reason the, we've moved a few things around. The other reason to put that in is it really is a backdrop from the state house. That's why I was the asking. state house. Yeah. Richard's in my, I sit in my living room and look at the lady on the top of the state <laughs> house, and the nice shiny golden dome. So it, it's it kind of Mather Terrace, it goes along there, those houses, but that, that whole neighborhood really are all visible from the state house, all the houses. Okay, let's let's uh, take each of the two neighborhoods separately and do a show of hands. Who's interested in adopting to the pink neighborhood there? Um, yeah, changing the, the boundary. The neighborhood or consistent with the historic district? Uh, my understanding was they're both. It's the same thing. Uh, there's a couple of houses. There's a couple of houses at the end of Terrace. The end of Terrace yeah. Street that were in until 2016, oh, and then yeah. they were yeah. removed from the, okay. but they're still in the neighborhood. Does that mean that they're not? Um, they're not in the. His, they're not in the national. That they're not register. conforming. So uh, it just that? means they're no longer contributing. Contributing. Right. Sorry, that's yeah. the word. They're no longer contributing. If they're so not they're contributing, then then the um, historic part of the design of yours wouldn't apply to them. But all the other would. But the other things would. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, either way, does anybody have a um, motion that they prefer one way or the other? Since we're going neighborhoods, let's keep it with neighborhoods. Yeah, I, I, think I move that we adapt the neighborhood. Uh, I can't read the number. Are we moving? Do we have to move? That's what I'm 16 dash 4? Can't be right. Something dash. Six. Sorry. 10 dash 6? 10 dash 4? 10 dash 4. Yes, 10 dash 4. 10 dash 4. Okay. So all neighborhood 10-4, who's in favor of adding that? Raise your hand. Um, I, for, the, for the sake of policy, I'm going to vote for this just because I'm mixed about it, but I, but I think what's, what's the, the deciding factor is that it does bring the entire neighborhood in and regulates it as a unit. Depart from ter from Bailey Street uh, East is really a cohesive neighborhood. They have block parties, do stuff yeah, like that. I know. I know a lot of people that live there. Yeah, yeah. I'll let them know that I made a decision <laughs> impacted me. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> uh, second yeah. motion to it's, include the yeah. redstone property in seven dash five. Seven dash five and the. So portions of the three properties it looks like on the west side yeah. what now there's just there's, there's two portions little on these properties yeah, and then there's a third oh, one yeah the third one has a little tiny before, cap yeah. before we vote what is the i vaguely know what the redstone property is but it's a is it state owned what no, state now private. privately owned what happens in that building? what is it what, it's a big red <laughs> Stone building. But does things happen in it? Is it a used building? Not anymore. It's privately owned now, so it's, 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 it's for secretary, future the state's question. office. It was a state police headquarters years ago. It's a, it's a mansion, it really is. Yeah, it's I see. Quite it a fine building. But, but it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not visible from State Street. 
Right. No, it's hardly it's visible from anywhere unless you yeah. get there because right. the but trees are all built. With a lot of property that somebody could do a lot of stuff with. Yeah. yeah. And then it would be real visible, right? Because it's up there. Is that an auction, by the way? Yeah, it was auctioned. So, okay, so let's move on. Who's in favor of including the uh, properties that Aaron motioned for? Sure. <laughs> I can't, I honestly can't remember what we talked about the last time we talked about. I don't remember actually having this guy. I feel like before. we focused on this side of the yeah. yeah. Those were the only, those were the only ones that I had that I, yeah. I kind of had some questions on. I'm going to check. I don't think we need a vote. It looks like that we had tried to follow, when Cliff Street wanted to come out and they voted to take them out, they had to leave properties in the designated downtown. And I can see the green here, 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 but it looks like there's one parcel here that's not in the designated downtown that we left in design review, so. Sure. I think our intention was Clean that to up. leave the part that's in Downtown. Yep. So, so we'll, that's we'll all. confirm that one little parcel that's sitting there to make sure that that's, if it's in the designated downtown, then we'll fix the map. If it's not, we'll adjust the design review in one parcel. That's not the homeowner who wanted to be, or the rental property that wanted to be in. Ooh. Or was that the? I wasn't here for that part of the discussion, but remember. we might Somebody need to check. To be in, but it could be, I, could I be thought there checking. was like some. Yeah. One rental property that wanted some historic tax credit, so they asked to be in or something. But so they could get them whether they're in or not, yeah. they? But oh, or no. But there's some things that are only available to Disney downtown. downtown. So that was it. Okay. Excellent. All right. I think that's everyone. Would we do we want to vote on? Oh, all Rex. Pieces? Well, all of all of the whole package now, um, as we discussed. So this is moving it to the city council. No, I would be warning a public hearing oh, okay. probably in January, just because there's no sense having a public hearing just before Christmas. So we would probably just have set up for some meetings in January where we would send out letters to everybody who's potentially impacted. And do we have? I mean, to this changes for everybody the rules, the boundary maps would be adjusting for just certain people. Um, do we have to have the final draft of the design review over the district changes set before you notice the public hearing? If you guys want to talk about it more, we can certainly talk about it more, but we can make those changes in about an hour. All I want to do is just yeah. take one quick look at the final draft. With all the tweaks, I don't think it'll be an issue. I don't think there's anything to mull over. I just want to make sure that. Would it would it be okay happen. if we go ahead and vote and then you and we'll get a draft for the at the time of the hearing? Sure. Because we'll be making changes sure. potentially, yeah. probably yeah. anyway. Yeah. I think it'd be um, really useful for people to have the old design review. Do a map that that shows the old design review boundaries and the new ones because. This is a, uh, I understand why the map is a lot better now, but it looks like one of the classy gerrymandering maps that they put up for <laughs> southern states. Mm -hmm. You know, the boundaries zigzag all over the place. It's not as bad as, as it seems once it's explained, but. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I agree. Come on up if you'd like. Uh, Unfortunately, we're just wrapping yeah. up that part, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, up, uh, Eric will fill you in on all the submitting changes. Okay, so we have a motion to uh, to make the to make the changes to the uh, design review regulations and the overly district as discussed. Sure. Okay. So we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just a little second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that four? 
Uh, I, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this one we actually need all four. Okay. <laughs> this one we need all, all, right, we need all, right. all four on this. Um, uh, but we will have to, we will have a chance to vote on the final after the public hearings, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's before it goes to city council. Yes. Okay. So there's so always a draft. The process is always yeah. um, public hearings. As people who were here and survived the zoning change know, we can have public hearings and then bring it back and decide to make all new changes and come up with a new version if, if if the public input mm -hmm. if what we hear from the public says we need to make changes um, we, we can make them and so, yeah. yeah and then once it goes to City Council they can do something totally different, totally different. and the their only obligation is to provide notice to the Planning Commission so we can provide comment so a couple of things that even the ones we talked about earlier about like savings pasture we were like Whatever you guys want to do, <laughs> we're okay with. Um, but we could have, if there was a proposal to make a big change, we could have come back and said, we, we think it's a bad idea and this is why. Okay. But ultimately, they can do whatever they want once yeah. it's in their hands. Okay. And when that comment happens, just for folks who haven't been around that long, uh, we will vote on what our voice is yep. going back to, to comment uh, okay. the city council. Okay. So just to double check. And this is just my nitpicky side. You all just voted on that the changes were okay. Was it also having Mike set up the public hearing as well? Yeah, we understand okay. that yeah. that's what okay. the next step is. Great. Yeah. Yes. Preparing for a hearing in January at some point. We'll figure out exactly what day, which one of our meetings, but we'll figure out a time. Feels like January right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's. Uh, thank you guys very sure. much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. And, and yeah, if you, if you don't want to hear about river hazard areas or talking about the vision statement for the city plan, you guys can feel free to go if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, or you can okay, hang out with us. Uh, so, do you want me to shut this all down at this point? Uh, yeah, I'll I think we're ready to move on. I'll go home and pour myself a drink and then watch the news because I can't do it any other way. <laughs> I can leave too. I'm sorry. I'm late. My class is at the end or quarter of, uh, of six, so. No worries. Yeah, sorry, we I'm missed sorry. your input. Yeah. But. Okay, so let's, okay. let's move to our next item, um, which is for Mike to discuss a potential river hazard area regulation map change. Um, so there'll be um, two pieces. One will be a map change, and then I'll be putting t also together a quick language. And I'll actually steal from Meredith if you're staying for this. I am going to stay. Okay. You want this? Nope. I just was going to, we're talking about the river hazard changes. Yeah. I didn't print it out. So what you guys, just showing you really quick. Um, so the river hazard regulations are a set of rules. They're not really the floodplain. They are a set of rules that the state has been working towards to try to talk about where the rivers, rivers naturally meander through a valley over time. Um, so what happens sometimes is things that are outside of the floodplain, they're high up on a bank, say, the river decides it's going to move over, it takes out the bank and drops the houses. And so the state has gone through and developed river hazard maps looking at where the rivers could move and identifying a place where it would logically be allowed to move. Um, the, the idea just being that we don't want to keep rip wrapping the streams. The more we try to rip wrap the streams, the more it pushes that energy somewhere else and it destroys someone else's river. So we just, the state's philosophy now is to try to be hands off and try to just keep the river within the river corridor meander belt, they call it the meander belt. Um, but usually when they make these maps, they have certain rules that they follow. One rule is that we're not going to be moving our roads. So if a meander belt comes up and butts into a road, it usually stops at the edge of the road. And in our case, um, and, I, and I missed this, Cumming Street is coming across here um, and coming up to the bridge. And for whatever reason, I mean, I can see this is blown up a lot um, to get this printed. And uh, you'll see it actually crosses to the other side of Cumming Street. So it kind of breaks one of the rules. Not sure why it didn't get caught in their auto clipping function, but um, 
the problem then come up we didn't notice it until somebody came up right here to decide they wanted to put an addition on the side of their house and they can't because it's in the river corridor and you can't put new structures in the river corridor and we're like yeah but it's on the other side of the street so it should have been clipped so the proposal is just we're going to clip this um, the long explanation for what's actually a relatively simple process we're just going to cut it off at the coming street because it should have and is the uh, road as a boundary principle that's kind of fine simple? It's the process they use. Um, if if I were to start looking around, you know, dragging this thing up up the stream, this is the north branch, by the way. That's Cumming Street. That's Route 12. If I were to go, the only river corridor we have is from Cumming Street Bridge to the Wrightsville Dam. That's the only section that we have regulations on. And in other places, you'll watch the meander belt come up, and then all of a sudden it goes boop, and it follows Route 12, and then it comes back out, and it'll make that um, in other places. Um, Mill Street, way up at the end where the dam is, um, it cuts off at Mill Street. So um, other places it did it, and for whatever reason it didn't on this one. So um, Yeah, that's, so that's been the proposal is that I was going to go to, because there's an active proposal, rather than go through a full adoption process right now, we were just going to go to city council and ask for an amendment, um, an interim amendment to the river hazard regulations, which would be valid for two years, and then we would have two years to go through and go through the adoption process for the river hazard regulations um, when we have the time to kind of present a full thing. Because it's a relatively minor piece, we think it's a pretty easy one. Um, the second piece that came up also um, not too long ago is, and this is kind of where I was going to, Meredith wrote up some quick language. We actually have some language somewhere else about um, that you would be allowed to put some structures in the f this area, provided they are low-valued structures um, w that contain low-value that have low value contents. So the reason why somebody has um, up on Route 12, they actually have an existing house with an existing business, and they want to put a, um, a sand shed in their backyard. They do a lot of um, snow plowing, so they want to just put a really cheap shed up to keep the rain and snow off of their sand pile. But it's in the river corridor, and it says no new structures in the river corridor. And we're like, that's not really what we meant. I mean. If that river were to move, we would not be actively trying to protect and save that structure. But the reality is it's going to take 100 years for that river to move that far. Um, and a structure that can be built for $1,000 doesn't seem to make a lot of sense that we wouldn't allow them to make such a small addition or repair. Provided it's a low value structure, we would obviously have to define low value with low value contents. We'd have to have something that kind of meets that criteria but that would at least give or or making that something that the DRB could approve you know with DRB approval a low value structure with low value contents could be approved that way Meredith doesn't have to make um, or actually Audra in this case wouldn't have to make an interpretation it could go to DRB and they could make that determination so just a note there are actually some allowances for accessory structures they're pretty limited in square footage right now we're talking like 150 square feet. So that's something I found after you and I had discussed. Ah, okay. Um, that there are some allowances because it wasn't it wasn't in the river corridor section. It was a lot earlier in the regulations. Ah, um, okay. So there are some allowances for some, but it has nothing about the value. And I think that makes sense to try and work that into here um, and play with it a little bit. So those were the two changes that we needed to, and I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. I mean, we don't um, need planning commission approval to do this, but if we're going to make changes, you know, it makes sense to go and let you guys know that we're going to go to city council and kind of make these proposals. We think they're relatively minor. We think they're in the best interest of the purpose and the goals and objectives of what we're trying to do. But um, sometimes we don't see these things till we start getting applications, and we go. Hmm. Is that really what we wanted to do? So, and some of these are always going to be problematic. I mean, you can see that that's actually 
a property there. I mean, some some people we're going to have to just deal with entire houses that are in the river corridor. Yeah, the underlying, or like the river could just wipe out your entire property. Yeah, and the and I think what the state has been trying to do is to to to, to start. You know, and the state's model goes river corridor all the way through downtown Montpelier. We we cut it off at Cumming Street Bridge. We said that's where we're drawing the line when we adopted these, um, just because. There's a lot, but it actually is surprising if you were to start to look through the number of structures from Cumming Street to Wrightsville. I mean, it's quite a long stretch of river, and there are you know, only about a dozen structures and major structures that are in the river corridor. So for the most part, what we're trying to be able to do at this point is to say, we've got some strict rules that'll say you can't put new things in the river corridor. You know, Montpelier's been here for 200 plus years and nobody's built in this river corridor now is not the time to start building in our river corridor. Um, if it's unbuilt, it should remain unbuilt. So just one question, just kind of a dumb one, but Cumming Street is a public road, right? It's not yes. a private one. It's a public street. Um, We're replacing the bridge right now. Right. OK. And I'm just curious, are these properties in the floodplain? Nope, they're not in the floodplain. Oh. No. The yeah, it's, it's it's pretty steep. Yeah, it, it's got a pretty steep bank. Yeah, so there are a number of them that are, and that's part of the balancing act we had for the other property that we were working on. Where it was that there was a stretch that was floodway, a stretch that was floodplain, floodway fringe, and then another section that was river corridor. So we kind of had this staggering of rules. But there's nothing to say that they don't do this. Sometimes you can be in the floodplain and not in the river corridor. Sometimes you can be just in the river corridor so depends a bit on the geology there's a bedrock outcrop then obviously you know the river's not going to move past the bedrock so they've usually with this map they've gone through and tried to find out where the the river walls are that they define so supposedly scientifically developed <laughs> And then we kind of chop it off. It. <laughs> um, so that was it for that one. Okay. Thanks. Do we need to move anything or no? No. Please oh, okay. Give us a hands up. Okay. Well, uh, the next item on the agenda, the last item for tonight, uh, we have 30 minutes to tackle, uh, is the discussion of the vision statement. Oops. As a uh, so the vision statement is something that, that the city plan will need, and Mike is going to show us a branding statement, which is a different, for a different, slightly different purpose, that was written by a consultant for Montpelier Alive. Um, did you have an, any plan for, for how we could use this, Mike, or is this just FYI for now, and then we'll... I think it was FYI for now. I yeah. think um, John and a couple others had mentioned we should do a vision statement. And I remembered that Montpelier Live had done one. And so I thought it might make sense to go and see maybe that's a good starting point. I think when I read it, I'm not sure if it quite fit our purpose here. But it still makes sense to know it exists and if we can integrate pieces from it, um, then that would probably be good. But it didn't seem like it was entirely going to fit for a city plan right. philosophy. Do we have it? No. Um, I don't. Oh, I printed out a copy. I used to have one. Yeah, I had printed them out. I didn't, and it's not in my box this time. Probably put it in three or four times in a row. Oh, Yeah, I think it was to basically the theme was everybody, um, every day we serve the people of the Green Mountain State, and pretty much that's the reoccurring phrase is that every every day we serve up the arts, every day we serve up fine food, every day we serve up uh, customer service, every day we serve up recreation, every day we serve up young people, every day we serve up <laughs> serving, serving. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, every day Montpelier serves. There we yes. go. That's where it is. Thank you. <laughs> In different context. It's a cannibal restaurant. <laughs> so, I mean, it has obviously paragraphs um, explaining each one of those, but it's kind of more of a, much more of a, a commercial branding statement um, rather than, a, say, a vision vision statement of perhaps where this residence and might so do we have guidance on what a vision statement for a city plan is supposed to say or should we just look at other city plans or yeah, I can. There's there's no requirement that we have one. Um, you know, different communities will put one in if they feel they've got a um, if they have a theme. Um, I've seen some good ones. I've seen some that aren't. I'd have to go kind of dig back through my stack of other were you, communities. Were you involved in the city plan when you were Gary? Uh, yes. Did they have I think they had one. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think there's. I think they were able to borrow a little bit out of their uh, Barry Partnership one, but they they focused their plan on a on a um, kind of on a couple of themes. I think healthy, healthy, um, healthy, safe, kind of one of those. Um, foundations that um, having a healthy community was what they were going to focus their entire plan around that theme. Um, did they serve up children? <laughs> they did not serve up children. <laughs> Actually, if you, if, you think about, if you think about the rise of helicopter parents, you know, we serve our children, maybe is the thing that's going on here. Uh, a vision. Themes, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think you're right. Some of I think John has you know John has a major planning background. So he has a lot of ideas for these things, and he had talked about it being a starting point. Does everyone agree that that could be a starting point? Something that we do now instead of later. What exactly? To start working on this, oh, yeah. basically, the, the idea of working on it now. I mean, could because. An alternative could be that we actually get into the weeds of the plan and let, let that guide what we think the vision the should vision be. Vision emerges out of that. Um, could do that too. Well, I'm not much of a visionary, so I mean, I'm just being honest here. I, don't I think that, that <laughs> if we were going to do a vision statement where we, I don't know, somehow tried to find a way to survey the public but, so that we. Yeah. That would be helpful. The instances where I've done visioning is you kind of do it with a group, a public group. And so how do we do that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, sounds like a lot. <laughs> couldn't some of that come from the words? That didn't they do a, a, you know, when they did their survey, they came up with a whole bunch of different words that people saw as the way, like when I mean that was more the downtown core master plan. But they got, um, you know, statements from people of how they saw the downtown and then how they want to see the downtown, the things they want to see change. And they had different words that people came up with. I don't know if that would be a place to start. I know that's just the downtown, but it may be a place to start. Yeah, we can try to pull pull from a couple of places. Cause, I mean, I, I, I agree. I'm not good at coming up with the big vision statements. Um, but for communities that do come up with a, do manage to come up with one, it actually is a, a great cohesive um, piece if you can come up with it. It's a nice way to talk about the plan too. If there's like going to be sort of this like public outreach piece, it's nice to have um, a vision you can. Have so what's your vision? I'm not sure, but I'm just saying it's a nice thing to have. <laughs> So I think we could brainstorm the planning commission members 
vision and what guides us and what we like and what we like and what we'd like to build on. Um, which might do nothing else but to just advertise to the public where we're coming <laughs> from. And, uh, we may find out we don't represent them. I don't know. But um, we, yeah, we could do something like that to start off. And then, then of course, who, who wants to be the Shakespeare of the group to turn our brainstorming into we cherish our children and know that in a world that is changing, our community is still a place where kids can walk downtown. Although, what? I've been what shamed for letting my child walk downtown. <laughs> I don't know. Really? <laughs> Have you? Oh, that's terrible. Do the, because um, we're, we're getting packets from other committees, right? So do those come with any kind of overarching visioning statement that we can consider? Well, they've got their aspirations, which will help to drive um, where they're going um, and, and to that so you guys already have historic they, they finished theirs um, I'm meeting with housing they've got one more meeting and they'll be done I met with transportation committee um, they want to work on it so they may have a couple meetings before they're done uh, I'm meeting with energy next week the energy committee I think I got one more kicking around who's the other one might have another one. So I've been working and I've been, oh, natural resources. So I'm meeting with the Conservation Commission. So I do have a number of these pieces that are moving. You guys have one. You should be getting housing. That'll be two. Um, and I'm hoping these other ones will, you know, as I work through the committees, you guys will start getting more of these. Um, and that might give you some sense of where sure. these guys are going. As I said, I think we'll have a total of 12 when we're done. Um, and I'm just targeting to get as many of these drafts put together and as many times meeting with these guys to hopefully work through. So I'm just trying to think in terms of kind of big picture timeline. I mean, we're we're getting into the thick of the city planning. I mean, that's that's what we that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. Yeah. So I mean, it seems like maybe we should start working on the nuts and bolts. The visioning statement will progress depending on what we get from the other committees. I'm thinking the committee like aspirations might be actually really helpful in writing. If if they're sort of focusing on themes, then we can collect and group those into bigger themes, and then that might help with our vision. Right. My concern is just you know now we're sort of on the city plan clock. And let's let's okay. not wait around for that. To, let's not wait for a visioning statement to materialize before we start doing. We can, we can start, yeah. We can start getting into to the weeds of some of the chapters for a while, then, and then play by, by year from there. Maybe we'll do the vision statement in the middle or at the end from there. Then, yeah. maybe we'll decide we'll want to break if we have a few meetings in a row that are all about just the chapters. Yeah. I mean, I do think it's a good idea to have something sort of as a north star to sort of guide us through this, but. I agree. I think we're just going to start. Yeah, I agree. I think it, I actually think it'll be helpful to start to help with see themes, and then I think it's most important to have something when it's all said and done, so that we can talk about it in an artful way. What are your thoughts, Mike, about the um, person or people to write the vision statement? I'm always willing if we've got ideas that start coming up to start pulling them together, um, but. I'll look for creative other people who might be a little bit more creative in the writing. I mean, sometimes in a flash of <laughs> inspiration, I can come up with the paragraph. But if it's something um, that you think would be fun for you, then like then you could say that you could take that, or we could try to from our group. Yeah, I mean, I think it whatever it is, I think it's going to be something that's going to be worked through. You know, try to think about what were some of the other ones that we've tried to kind of hammer through. That sometimes you just group have to group think your way through through some things to make sure it you know I can't develop a vision for Montpelier on my own so it's really going to be throwing some things out letting everybody beat it up yeah. give it to the public let them yeah, it, just, the and it, just, it just seems like something with something is sort of bulky and disparate as a city plan will undoubtedly be it just seems like probably the best idea and this is just me spitballing right now is get two or three 
big threads that bind and just sort of use that as the, yeah. you know, yeah, that, like, mm-hmm. don't that get, 90, don't f- that we got to think of what night, like 90, 95% of the population can get behind, right. you know, we'll never get a hundred percent. It'd be great if we get a hundred percent people behind a single vision. We may disagree on how we're going to get there, but we'd all agree. This is what we want in the future. Free, new. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all kinds of things. As long as it's got free, new, and delicious in it. I'm happy to help with writing. Yeah. I'm happy to help with that. Yeah, I think, I think usually your visions, you're not going to really be looking for how we're going to get things done, um, no. but really about you know, what's, what's the condition in the state of, of state of things. Yeah. yeah, maybe we could have a couple of commissioners like work together or something. One concern I have is I, I would, if something like that needs to have a, a voice, um, I'm trying to remember. There's like a kind of saying about two people try to draw a horse and you get a camel. So that's the saying, right? Something like that. Like, it's like we don't want that kind of committee. Yeah. A committee designing a horse is a camel. Is that is it a committee? So we don't want a committee. Like, <laughs> like it's, I think the writing project's probably for one or two people. So, okay, we plan to do that when we get there. Good question, Mike. Where, where are we? Sort of. So you've been talking to other committees. Just trying to remember. You gave us an update about this a couple of meetings ago. Just yep. So ahead. I've been trying to develop the different implementation strategies for each committee and then meeting with them to start to have a I, I usually have an initial meeting where I talk to them. Unfortunately a number of them meet only once a month, so it kind of takes a bit to get to meet to them a couple times. But um, I meet with them once to kind of go over the the, the basics of what we're trying to do and I give them a draft of just something for them to work on pull apart um, in both historic and housing so far the first two that I've kind of gotten mostly through have really thought it's been a great process they've really enjoyed it um, we try to focus on the eight years we try to focus on you know what what our aspirations are and then our goals and what we're going to do to accomplish our goals and we're, we try to be pretty specific um, I kind of let them talk about what they want and then I fit it into the model that we set up so um, they've really uh, liked it so it usually takes like three meetings to get through but I've gotten historic preservation done um, with a lot of help from Meredith uh, we got that one done we've got housing which is almost done they've reviewed most of it um, and uh, transportation natural resources I've got it I've got the draft done. I just have to meet with them to kind of start. They'll be the first of three meetings for them. Energy will be the first of probably two meetings for them. And what do you expect the lift for us to be? So at this point, when they get done, they're giving their their Christmas list. So when it comes to the Planning Commission, what you guys are going to look at is um, – are there things that haven't been talked about that should be talked about? Um, so public transportation could be in community facilities. Public transportation could be in transportation, and it could be in energy. Um, who's talking about it? Are all three talking about it? Are none of them talking about it? Um, if none of them are talking about it, then, then we've got to assign somebody and say, hey, somebody needed to do it. Nobody did it. But how are we kind of framing this? If all three are talking about it, or two of them are talking about it, are you talking about it in the same ways? Do you have the same goals? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's a role that you're going to be looking at it, that what's missing, what's being talked about in multiple places. Um, sort of synthesize that. Kind of synthesize it. And maybe at a certain, and to a certain point, you may be going through and saying, you know what, at this point, I don't think this is going to be a good recommendation. Um, as much as they may want, you know, um, a, a new fund to do this. I, I don't think that's going to be an appropriate thing. Maybe you guys kind of let those go, but certainly when it gets to city council, they're going to probably go through and say, look, we can't, you know, we already have a housing trust fund and we already have a transportation alternatives fund. You know, we can't have a historic fund and an energy fund. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody can't have a fund. We won't have enough money. So right. we're going to say your, your request for having that in the plan as a fund we're going to just take that out of the plan. Do you anticipate there being sections of the city plan that will be uniquely ours that won't be covered by 
a commission. Yes, you guys will have the responsibility for the land use plan, right. which I've been focusing on the other committees right now, um, knowing that at some point I'll have to draft up an implementation strategy for the land use so you guys can start okay. working your piece through. Um, there are also a couple of chapters that don't have committees to go through, um, utilities and facilities. Um, we don't have a utilities and facilities committee, so I'll probably be working with um, the DPW staff mm -hmm. to kind of review that. There's not a lot there. They've got they've got some principles that they are working towards. They want to have sustainability um, is a key for them um, because we had for a number of years we didn't have enough money in the paving budget, so the roads got really bad. So now what their goal has been is to have a sustainable paving fund that every year we get that same amount of money, so we can continue to pave because pavement lasts 12 to 15 years so we know we have to pave every 12 to 15 years so we should be paving eight percent of our streets every year right. it's, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> everything goes to hell and then we have to go and spend more so that's kind of in the same principle applies for our sewer lines and our water lines that keep breaking well we've got to get to a point where we are have reach a sustainable repair uh, rate on our our water lines and so I know there are going to be certain principles that we can get through them. Public safety is another one that there is no committee for. Um, so I'll have to work with them to develop the implementation strategy with um, Chief Gowans and um, Chief Fagos, and we'll develop something for that. City Council will have the governance chapter, so they'll get a chapter for them to work on. Um, and then most of the other ones have committees. Are you going to be facilitating the city council for that? Yep, yeah, I'll probably meet. I'll work probably through the manager's office to go through and, and try to work on that one. Um, I, I haven't even started that one yet. I've been really focusing on, on the other one so far just because I want to start to get more of these uh, across the finish line. And then once we've got the implementation strategies, then hopefully what will come out of that is you guys would eventually end up with these 12 chapters. and. You know, it's not like we're going to wait till we have the 12 chapters before we move on to the next step. The next step after that would then be to start to write the chapters for each one of these, which is our goal was 1,000 to 1,500 words. We want to do things online. We want to have a digital plan. So the idea is with 1,000 words, it can, you know, fit reasonably on the screen. We'll have links to other plans. So really, you know, you know, why is our goal for transportation to have complete streets? Why is it important? Why is that our aspiration? You know, we don't have to go through and explain, you know, 17.5 miles of Montpelier roadways are class two roadways. That's nice. But that's what a lot of city plans are. It's just a bunch of statistics, a bunch of facts. What we really want to do is to get these other things and then have links to, you know, if you want more, here's a report on this and here's a report on this and here's a report on this if you're really interested more, but, um, you know, the question of why, what's our plan, and what's our goals, and you know, why are we paying taxes to take care of our streets? Well, this is the goal. Um, then, obviously, same for housing and energy and transportation, and natural resources. So, um, so that's that's the plan. And as I said, where we're at right now is I probably have six. So I'm, you know, about halfway through the implementation strategies. Um, and then, you know, my hope would be that we get all the implementation strategies done, we get all the chapters written up, and then um, then we can get that online um, and get go through an approval of that. And then we can build off of that going forward. Because we did want to go and do other things eventually to, you know, if we have the plan, then I would love to have videos and I'd love to have more um, links that would help, you know, if we talk about, uh, tax stabilization. So we want to have a tax stabilization, and three or four of them have tax stabilization. You should be a click on tax stabilization and have a description of what our tax stabilization policy is. But that second layer of everything, um, you know, don't want perfect to be the enemy of the good. You know, we can't do everything. So if we can get the first layer done and then look at that second layer to be something that we would work on over the next eight years to kind of go through and say, you know, we had a goal of. You know, you know why do we do this in zoning? Why do we do this in zoning? Well, that's because over here we talked about it, and we talked about it here, and we talked about this. All right. Okay. So then we've got a connection between the master plan and our implementation. So. 
Makes sense. Have so, to work. so at our next meeting, we'll have a couple of chapters, maybe, I'm thinking? You'll certainly have at least two. You guys already have yeah. historic, um, and you'll um, almost definitely have housing. And we can start working through. Okay. Yeah, le yeah, and at least get a feeling. Start re re reading those and reviewing those and getting a sense of what these are doing and how they're going and, you know. All right. If we're heading in a completely wrong direction, then now would be a good time to turn the boat. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we might want to revisit. I mean, once we yeah. get housing done, maybe we're three or four chapters down the road and realize this all relates to housing. We need to go back. Or yeah, and that's the, the advantage is once we've got these things together, there's still everything is changeable. There's nothing, you know, and that's what I tell the committees. I'm like, you guys are going to give me give me stuff. We're going to talk about stuff. But even if you guys think six months down, like, oh, we should have put this in the plan. There's until city council gets done, right up through the city council hearings, somebody can go in and add or remove a strategy. Um, but the hopes are the goals and the aspirations. Hopefully, will remain more static. Hopefully, you know, they'll maybe tweaked and turned and shuffled a little bit. But hopefully. What we end up talking about is, you know, if we all agree this is our aspiration, and you know, it really has three goals in order to do that. And here's one, two, three, and how are we going to do that? How are we going to, you know, have safe housing? How are we going to have affordable housing? Should we solicit input as we work through the chapters? You think would that be productive, or is it something we can wait for the end? As an example, let's say next week we get done with our housing chapters. Would it be a good time to go ahead and send it to somewhere like Downstreet to get feedback? Or They're actually on the housing task force, so we've got that. But it might make sense if we reach a point, and I'm really flexible, if we reach a point where it's like, hey, we've got three chapters, we've got three, cha three chapters or four chapters, and we're done with these, there's going to be a little bit of a wait before we get the next set because transportation and natural resources are, are you know, taking time to work on theirs. Maybe we'll just have a public hearing and get public input on these three or four chapters. You know, warn a hearing to go and say, "Hey, we'd love to hear about you guys on, you know, from the public on historic and housing and energy and, and you know, let's start getting some feedback on these and see if they think we're heading in the right direction." And then knowing that we still have eight more chapters that will be rolling out when they're ready. Can we recalibrate? Okay. Okay. That sounds wonderful. I think we're done here for tonight. Thank you, Emily, for your participation. You're definitely an admirable middle school student <laughs> to go through this. Uh, so I hope you've learned something. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really nice to be on this board and just experience all this. And I think I definitely like learned what I wanted to from the experience, and I'm glad I did it. So. And oh, thank you guys for like accommodating me <laughs> and not being like, why is she here? So, yeah. How long, did you, how long did you, because you were here this summer when I, before I started. Yeah. So. Uh, it's been about a year. I think I started in January of this year, so almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. Did a great job. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Okay. In a second. <laughs> We're going to call Marcella the second. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, that's, that's next meeting. We'll meeting would be adjourned. two.